So this is a motorcycle skills refresher course hosted by a police department in Chandler. It's free and I came out here and we're gonna we're gonna probably do a bunch of figure eights or something. They said we'd be doing wheelies and jumps, but nobody brought any ramps. So I don't think we're gonna get to do that. It's weird, I'm not supposed to like look down, but when I'm that close to cones, I have a tendency to not look at them because I don't want to hit them. Kind of like rocks when you're off road. Actually, not entirely sure what the problem was. I wish that guy would give me a thumbs up or something so I knew I did good. I need positive encouragement, sir. Right now, they're stressing that, like, throughout these corners, you gotta keep your clutch in its friction zone, and that way you keep control over it. Yeah, I'm definitely guilty of never doing that. Usually, when I'm in a corner and I wanna cut power, I fucking grab the clutch. Yeah, I cut the whole thing. You know, when it comes back on, you're gonna bring it back on smoother, and you're gonna have more control. And they're right. It's like things like this, like, when you're actually out riding and you spend years doing it, you stop dissecting all of these little aspects of it. And so, you know, these guys spend time dissecting it, and they spend time trying to actually master it and, and use these techniques and so it's kind of interesting to be told this stuff again like I'm sure this was going over back in my original uh, MSF course but I don't remember How'd that feel going through? it felt a lot better it felt like I had more control over it especially with the higher profile bikes when you're, when yeah. you're dealing with something that sits higher like the, the, or the sport touring the enduros that kind of thing you're sitting up higher so you got to be in that gray a little more because you have to lean the bike more the guys on the big bikes haven't grown clears like that so they got a little <laughs> little luxury on that I'm braking now. Goal is to stop from 10 miles an hour with only the front brake, which is going to be fun because I'm pretty sure mine's going to shriek like a banshee. Press. Press. In the dirt, you can stab it. Here, press. And you have this long suspension, so this thing's really going to dive, and you don't want it to, you know, do that. You want it to be nice and controlled. A smooth okay. dive. Nice and smooth, okay? Smooth dive. Oh my god, this is gonna be so noisy. This is embarrassing as fuck. Remind me to change these brakes. Good, good. Now take it to 15. Now, don't cheat to look down. You take this out in the dirt quite a bit? Yeah. Yeah, that's why. I'm always looking at the rocks. Yes, yes. Okay, your dirt biking habits are coming onto the street, but you have balance. Okay, so you can get away and cheat with looking down, all right, but always be cautious that it will cause a balance disruption. I never considered that before. Like that tendency to look down off-road is actually normal. Look at this guy. This guy is so good. He's scraping the boards on that thing. While he's got like a cup in the cup holder, I want to see him take a drink of that while he's scraping the boards. Oh, not that hard for me, because I got this narrow fucking bike. After this, we're gonna do it really, really slow, and that should be interesting. This girl right here locked her front wheel earlier. Completely dropped that bike. Make sure you guys give yourself enough room with that front tire when you're going around, okay? You're cutting that corner, that first one you hit, knocked down because you were looking right at it, and you didn't give yourself enough room to turn that corner, okay? Get that front wheel out wide, bring that bike around, and then loop it. Okay, just keep it moving nice and smooth, alright? Oh, I could totally go slower than this even. In fact, first gear without the throttle is actually pulling me fast. The trick to doing this smooth 
is get to that first cone. You set your speed as you go around that first cone. Maintain that speed nice and smooth. Okay. All right? I'm just letting the gear pull me. These cones need to be tighter. Oh, it's so hard not to look at that. I'm looking at the last cone. Oh. They want you to look at the very end of the drive and then right around each cone. <laughs> well, not looking at them at all. <laughs> oh, he messed up. <laughs> I'm not ready yet. Yeah, I'll tell you the same thing we've been telling everybody else. No front brake on this one. No front brake. No front brake. Forget that it's even there. Good head and eyes as far as where you're looking. Best one so far out of the group. Okay. The thing you need to work on though is that gray area. Okay. You can always, if you're going too fast because you're in that gray area, you can always what, pull in the clutch, right? Yep. So use your back brake. Okay, it's a combination of clutch, throttle, and brake to get in that area where your engine's constantly revving. So you should always be, even if you're only going this fast, uh, you know what I mean? Drag the rear brake to adjust your speed right. then. Yep. So basically what they want you to do is like keep the clutch in the friction zone with the throttle applied the entire time. And then to adjust your speed, you drag the rear brake. It's so uncomfortable though. Like whenever I want to like cut power, I just I actually grab more clutch and just actually cut the power off. It's very awkward. They call it the gray area, but really it's friction zone. That's kind of how it's always been referred in every context I've ever heard of it. I think I kept my fingers almost in the same position that whole time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, you look good. Very smooth going through the exercises. Just keep working on that gray area. Find that find that comfort area for you where you lock into it. Well, that was pretty cool. 